In front of me is the brand new Merida Sculptura of Lamprey Merida's Jan Pollank. Now, this is the lightweight bike in their range, but it's also been tailored for aerodynamics. So we caught up with the product director at Merida in order to find out exactly what this bike is all about. Talk me through uh, exactly what you've done to this frame then, just to refine it for the next generation. Actually, our Sculptura is traditionally uh, the lightweight bike in the Merida family. And uh, the previous generation is already four years old, being already super lightweight and uh, extremely stiff in the button bracket area. But the aerodynamic performance of the previous Sculptura was lousy. Not because we're stupid, it was simply uh, no target when we developed the last generation. Now aero is getting more and more important. This bike is super lightweight, stiff, comfortable and, what it was not before, aerodynamic. So in terms of actual performance then, how, how light is the frame set? Actually the whole frame set is exactly at one kilogram, frame and fork. The frame itself, it's about 720 grams. Okay, and, and in terms of aerodynamic performance then, um, you said it's not quite up to the reactor. How, uh, how much slower at 40, 50k an hour is it? Actually, uh, the wind tunnel testing we made, uh, and I just tell you the figures of the old Scultura and the reactor to have the direct difference in between. Actually, they were 22 watt at 50 km power in between the reactor being one of the fastest uh, bikes in the whole uh, peloton and the old Scultura being not aero at all. And now with uh, the new one, actually uh, we closed the gap up to 11 watts, so halfway. But for a lightweight bike, I would say already the maximum what is possible to achieve. Okay, so, so what have you actually done to the frame itself then in order to, to close that gap? We completely redesigned the frontal area of the frame. We made uh, intense CFD, compute, computational fluid dynamics analysis, especially for head tube, fork and for the down tube. But uh, we had as well, as well different prototypes with different tube uh, sections, which we had double checked in the wind tunnel to uh, finally come to the result as we have it. As well as being lightweight and aerodynamic, one thing that struck me is the fact that the brakes are mounted to the chain stays. Now, we've seen recently that a lot of brands are starting to put the brakes back on the seat stays because that's more aerodynamic. But in this instance, they've actually tailored the seat stays for more comfort. It kind of makes sense. You take the brake away, put it on the chain stays, and you get a much more compliant ride on the bike. So it's really useful for a little guy like Jan. His bike is going to be much, much smoother to ride. Like most of the teams, he's on full Shimano Durace Di2. The team are though sponsored by Fulcrum Wheels. These are their relatively bog standard, quite, dare I say, antiquated design, but he's got a full spectrum of wheels at his disposal. The only departure from Shimano in the whole group set, because remember that they've got a Shimano direct mount rear brake under there, not any proprietary rear brakes, but they've got rotor cranks and Q-rings on there. Now, there's nothing particularly extraordinary about that, except for the fact they have Rotor's brand new power meter, which fits inside the bottom bracket axle. It's kind of cool, it only measures left side, but it's torque specific, so it does work more accurately than a crank-based one, so we're told. But what's really quite cool is the fact that it works off a double A battery, so the absolute bog standard battery that you find just about everywhere. And that's kind of cool. Now, like most teams at the moment, Lampre Merida are running 25 mil tubular tires, now it's interesting that Merida actually had to factor that in when they designed the Sculptura for the second time. The first one was based around 23mm tyres and had a really, really short wheelbase but no clearance to 25 mils. Now there's acres of clearance around their 25mm tubs so they could actually even fit 28s on or possibly even 30s actually by the look of it. Finishing kit comes from FSA and a Pro Logo saddle. Interestingly, Polank is actually running aluminium handlebars. He doesn't really have to worry about weight on this bike. In fact, the team's going to be adding probably at least 400 grams of weight in order to get it up to the UCI minimum requirement. So all in all, it's a pretty sweet looking bike that. And it'll be interesting to see exactly how it performs over this year at Italia and then of course for the rest of the season. For more pro bikes, as I'm sure you want to see more, we've got virtually every bike in the pro peloton. If you click up there, you get straight through to our playlist. Or if you click down there, you get through to our playlist of Giro d'Italia videos for 2015, of which there are plenty of them. Finally, before you go to either of those, make sure you've subscribed to GCN. You can do that by clicking on Jan Pollank's brand new bike.